What's going on guys? CTA Prime back here again. Today I finally got my hands on the all new Odroid N2 and we're going to take a look at some Android performance. Now I do want to get this out of the way before we get started. This is the initial public release of Android. It's Android 9.0 so there are going to be issues here and there. Performance will increase by a bit over time but don't expect it to be a giant jump. This single board computer is using the all new Amlogic S922X. It's a decent chip on paper, but we're gonna see how it performs. I'm gonna run some benchmarks and I'm gonna test some native Android games here. Within the next month or two, you're gonna see a lot of Android boxes with this Amlogic S922 in it. So as more companies, people, and developers get their hands on this, more fixes and better performance will come down the road. But I've been super excited to get my hands on this chip, so I'm gonna go ahead and test it out in Android 9.0. This is far from a review video. I'm gonna wait a couple weeks to get some better software support and then I'll do a full review video. But right now we're just gonna check out the specs, run some benchmarks and give you my initial thoughts on the board. So these are up for pre-order right now. I'm not sure if they're sold out or not. You can get them from Amerodroid or Odroid's website. I will leave links in the description. They make two models of the Odroid N2. One comes with two gigabytes of RAM and the other one comes with four. I opted to pick up the four gigabyte model along with a 16 gigabyte eMMC and the official Odroid Wi-Fi adapter. As for the size on this thing, it does take up more room than the Raspberry Pi 3 B Plus or the Odroid XU4. I have the XU4 on the left and the B Plus on the far right. You could actually set two Raspberry Pi 3s on top of this board and still see the Odroid N2's PCB from the bottom, so it is quite bigger than the Raspberry Pi. The board itself without the heatsink is the same height as the Raspberry Pi, but with the included giant heatsink that they've placed on the bottom of this, it doubles the size. So if you've been looking for a more powerful single board computer with the same footprint as the Pi, you're going to have to look elsewhere. The heatsink they're using on the N2 is absolutely massive. This thing will not thermal throttle as long as you have this guy on here. Now through all of my testing, it barely got warm. I wanted to take a look at this new CPU, so I removed the heatsink. I figured they'd be using thermal pads here, but they're using thermal paste and they put a lot on here. I'm going to be replacing this before I do my tests. Cleanup is super easy. I just used an old rag and some isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to make sure everything is completely dry before I reassemble this. But here's the S922X. This is a 12 nanometer chip. The thermal paste I'm going to be reapplying is NTH2. I would also go with Thermal Grizzly, but whatever you got will work with this. This does have an eMMC slot like the Odroid XU4 and it also has a micro SD card slot. So we have dual storage here. There's no onboard storage unless you install an eMMC. I'm going to go over the quick specs real quick. If you're interested in finding out everything this board is capable of, I'm going to leave links to Odroid and Ameridroid in the description. But for the CPU, we have that all new Amlogic S922X. This is a six core CPU. Four Cortex-A73 cores at 1.8 and two Cortex-A53 cores at 1.9. This is a 12 nanometer chip. And in the past, Amlogic has lied about their clock speeds, but I've made sure that these are running at 1.8 and 1.9 respectively. The 922X is going to be competing with the RK3399. I'm going to tell you right now that if you're interested in upgrading to this from like an Nvidia Shield Android TV, there's no point because the Shield TV will trump this in every way possible, except for the ability to install multiple operating systems. But if you're looking for an Android TV device, you can't go wrong with the Shield TV. The GPU they packed in here is the new Mali G52. This is a six core CPU. Technically it's a six core CPU at 846 megahertz. You can get this new board in two different RAM variants, two gigabytes or four. They both use LP DDR4 at 1320 megahertz. As for storage, it does have that eMMC slot, or you can use a micro SD card. Now, I'm not sure about booting from USB, at least at this time. It may be possible down the road. This board actually has a ton of I.O. 40 GPIO pins, 4 USB 3.0 ports, 3.5 millimeter audio slash video jack, IR receiver, HDMI 2.0, and there's more here, I just can't list it on screen. I'll have the full specs list in the description. I'll also leave a link to Ameridroid and Hard Kernel. For the operating systems at this time, there are a few Linux variants floating around, but you can download Ubuntu 18.04 and Android 9.0 from Hard Kernel's website. And luckily, the guys from the Odroid Retro Arena, who brought us pretty much Retro Pie on the Odroid XU4, have had these for a few weeks, and they've got it up and running on here. Now, it's a very early build. I will take a look at it in the next couple days. So we do have a lot to look forward to for the new Odroid N2. 
So with all that out of the way, let's get into a little bit of Android testing. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this is a very early build of Android 9.0. It's going to get better from here. All right, so here we are with the Android 9.0 build on the all-new Odroid N2. We're going to open up IDA64. Now, I have run into some bugs here and there, and I can't do a complete review yet. So this is a first look, initial thoughts, and I'm going to run some benchmarks. So as you can see, we have the Odroid N2 made by Hard Kernel, 4 gigabytes of RAM. For the CPU, we have that Amlogic S922X. We have two A53 cores at 1.9 gigahertz and four A73 cores at 1.8. For the GPU, we have the Mali G52. It's stating that it's a two-core GPU. I'm not exactly sure about this, but it does support Vulkan, and in this version, it does support Vulkan, but there are some issues with graphical glitches going on, so all that needs to be fixed. It'll also do OpenGL 3.2. And for the version, Android 9 Pi. So I've already run all of the benchmarks you see on screen, and I've created some charts. I'm going to be comparing this to one of the closest boards out there the NanoPi PC T4. Now that runs the RK3399, also a six core CPU. I've done a lot of videos on the 3399. If you're interested in checking those out, I'll leave links in the description, but I think that's the closest match here and I wanna see how it compares. After we're done with the benchmarks, I'm gonna show off a couple native Android games. And as you can see, I got a lot of emulators here. I'm gonna save those for another video, but I do wanna show one off just so you can get a feel for how this thing's gonna perform. Now, I have run into issues. This is the initial release. There's always going to be problems. So my emulator video might be coming out in the next couple days if a new release is available. So the first benchmark I went with was the good old Geekbench. This is the single core score at the top here. We obviously have the Odroid N2 with the S922X with a score of 1318. The Nano PC T4 with the RK3399 scored a 1306. Now this is within the margin of error, and this is indicative of all the RK3399 boards that I've tested. They're not much off from this. Now keep in mind that the Amlogic 922X is a newer chip to the market, and this is definitely a new board. So this score will increase, but I don't think it'll ever go over 1600 in its lifetime. Next up, we have the multi-core side of Geekbench 4. The N2 scored a 3916 and the T4 scored a 3094. So with multitasking, the S922X is going to be a bit faster than the RK3399. Moving over to some graphics benchmarks, we have GFX Bench. This is T-Rex on-screen OpenGL 2.0. The N2 scored a 2,467, and the T4 scored a 2,052. Now, I know it's a couple hundred points ahead of the RK3399, but this really isn't much of a jump, at least with OpenGL 2.0. Let me rephrase that. It's not as much of a jump as I was hoping it would be. As for 3D Mark iStorm Extreme, the N2 maxed out. Now, the T4 scored an 11,956, and it's not quite clear on where the max is for iStorm Extreme, but I think it's around 12,000 to 13,000. Here we have 3D Mark Slingshot. Now, unfortunately, the RK3399 doesn't support Vulkan, so we couldn't run Slingshot Extreme on that, so I went with the older OpenGL version. The S922X definitely has an advantage over the RK3399 with this test. And since I'm here and we're dealing with Android, I did want to compare this at least with one benchmark against the NVIDIA Shield TV. 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme OpenGL ES 3.1. The N2 scored a 1,166 and the NVIDIA Shield TV scored a 3,959. I'm going to say it again because it still holds true. If you're looking for an Android device to run on your television, go with the NVIDIA Shield TV. As you can see in OpenGL 3.1, we outscored the N2 by leaps and bounds. And this holds true in every test that you'd run on the N2 versus the NVIDIA Shield Android TV. Here we have some native Android games running on the N2. This is PUBG. Runs really smooth here. Unfortunately, I had to play with my mouse. No controllers are supported unless you install a third-party app. And yes, sound does work, but for some reason I was having issues with my game capture in this game here. By far, this is the smoothest I've ever seen PUBG run on a ARM-based single board computer. Here's Asphalt 9, and unfortunately, these are the graphical glitches I was talking about, and this happens with most every other game that I tested. 
The flickering you're seeing here can only be stopped if I bring up the taskbar at the bottom or the very top, and it's 10 times worse than the menus. Overall, gameplay was super smooth, it's just got that flickering going on and it's really annoying. And finally, I did test out God of War Chains of Olympus and PPSSPP. This is version 1.80. This is the OpenGL back end. Everything's on low. Performance isn't looking great on this initial Android release, so I wanted to swap over to Vulkan. And when Vulkan's enabled, I get the same flickering with the emulators also. So overall, the Odroid N2 definitely has potential. Still got some work to do on the software side. For everybody who's going to ask me in the comments below about emulation on this device, I think it's going to be pretty decent, but you're not going to get PS2. Some GameCube games are going to run at 30 FPS. Don't expect it to run Soul Calibur 2 at full speed. We're talking about the ARM version of Dolphin as it sits right now. PSP, Dreamcast, and Sega Saturn are eventually going to run at full speed on this. Even with God of War Chains of Olympus, I really feel that that's going to happen with this chip here. But as for GameCube, I know some people are going to disagree with me on this, but I've been doing this ARM thing for a long time. I can tell you right now, even just looking at the initial Android benchmarks here, that GameCube or the Dolphin emulator just isn't going to run well on this chipset. Now, it could come down to the Dolphin developers making a special build for the S922, but I seriously don't see that happening. Oh yeah, and I know somebody's going to ask, Fortnite is not compatible with the Android version here or the board, so it's not going to work until the Epic team says, hey, we're going to let this work on this chipset. That's just what it comes down to. But like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is a fairly new chipset. We got to give it a little while before we get the full review on this board, but as it sits right now, it does have a lot of potential for what it is. Really appreciate you guys watching. All links for everything I mentioned will be in the description. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and if you want to see anything else running on the Odroid N2, just let me know. And like always, thanks for watching.